I've just marked off one side where the instrument panel bracket's going to go, and I just drew holes. I actually uh, went ahead and drilled the, um, those are 1 64th inch holes for these massive AAA, or these uh, aluminum 64 rivets. Uh, they're, they're really big, uh, biggest one so far. And um, so I've got some holes drawn for those. And then these little guys, um, I feel like the bracket's a little too big, like there's just too much material right here. I could probably cut down that almost in half, but um, it's pretty thick, so I'm going to try it as is, and if I need to, I can uh, I can cut that down. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and install for now and see how it goes. I think I'm going to be okay. Um, it's just that it takes up so much room on the sides of the panel there. You can see where the screws, I put those little screws in there too, and um, that comes with, uh, with, with these, or these cap screws to the bracket from group one. So I'm kind of working on group one. You can work on any group you want with a six caliber. Um, I think uh, Tom's broken it down into about 26 different groups. So there's quite a bit here to do. And whatever you feel in the mood to do, you're kind of, it's, it's kind of good to just jump in and do it. Um, I'm just happening to do the instrument panel first because it's part of group one. And with that comes like uh, former plates that you'd put on top of the, um, you know, of the back of the fuselage there so that from the root tube down you can have something to cover with fabric. But I'm not going to really probably do that right now. I'm going to save that until later. But uh, a lot of other Group 1 stuff is just kind of miscellaneous stuff. Like I mentioned, the, the hand grips. And I had to take the front hand grip off because uh, you got to put the brake on. So um, that just kind of rolled back. No big deal. But um, I could put it on again. But yeah, the cushions are just placed there just to give me some sort of placement for the instrument panel. But um, I'm just doing the standard instruments with... Uh, not sure about yet the engine, what I'm going to do. I might either do the Hearth um, 3202, which is the 55 horse, or we're looking at an Aero V engine, which is a Volkswagen engine made by Aero Conversions. And so that's a possibility too. They have an 80 horsepower uh, model that they've been putting in airplanes for a while. There's not many pusher configurations, but that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at now. And so I'm going to wait on those engines, uh, engine instruments until, until I see what I'm going to get. It's probably just the standard 2-inch. EGTCHT I'll put in anyway, but um, that motor is pretty cheap. That that engine's like uh, I think right as of this time it's about seventy six hundred dollars, and then plus a little bit more for the exhaust and maybe a couple other things. But it, it's pretty nice how it comes. Uh, it comes with a twelve hour assembly time, so you actually put it together. So I'm just still thinking through what, what I'm going to do for engines. I probably just go with the Hearth option. It's just it seems like they're selling a little bit less of them, and not less of them, but um, they're, they're collecting orders and, and then they, they place an order for them. So we will see. That's still a ways away. Got a lot to do here. My instrument panel is mounted here. I think I'll get little small washers to go under there just to kind of help with vibration. But And uh, the brackets went on pretty good. I kind of had to eyeball it a little bit because it was a little hard to get in there. But I think that that's about right. This side might be a little higher, but then again, this top isn't cut perfectly um, round anyway. I mean, it's round, but it's not, you know, exactly lined up. So that looks, that's good. It feels comfortable when I sit in there. So that's that. Three really big aluminum um, rivets there, like I was saying, and then just these, a couple of these, and I'll tighten down those lock nuts later. Because uh, I, probably, I probably could go ahead and do it now, because I'm not going to, I'm going to do all my instrument work before I even put the nose cone on, of course, and then, you know, the windshield. But um, now I think I'm gonna go to the throttle quadrant, and I was sitting in here trying to feel where it would be comfortable, and uh, I think I'm gonna do it right in front of this rib right here. So right about there. If I do it too far back on the other side, then you're starting to get into the second, um, to the uh, rear person's rudder pedal, and then the primer is gonna go on that mounting uh, mounting plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead first and, and put the, uh, mounting plate on uh, and just follow the instructions for group 15. So group 1 is what I was doing now and I'm going to jump to group 15 I think just to put the throttle in place just after talking to Tom yesterday. So I'm putting on the throttles, uh, throttle levers and the mounting plates. Uh, here's the rear one. Um, I have the knob on the top but I don't have the screw yet for it because there was a 
uh, some inventory changes and, and Tom sending that out but um, you can see what I did is I actually I put some uh, stainless steel 42 rivets in the bottom and uh, and then um, you can mount it on the bottom and of course I'm gonna have to probably just like mallet this around here so it's uh, well actually, I actually don't have the mallet around there because it's gonna come around here so that that probably be okay I just have to tape up tape up that and kind of see how get that out of the way for the fabric work but um, when it comes up here I've taped it at the top because um, I'm gonna do the fabric work around around this uh, side rail so you got to make sure I can take this up and then kind of pull that back and then wrap that around and then if you see the forward throttle that looks pretty good and I tightened it down so uh, yeah it's pretty cool and um, this looks a little tighter so I'm gonna have to probably mallet that in there so that the fabric comes around here pretty nice and uh, so I don't know but uh and now I'm, I'm gonna try to see if I can attach the the um, the connecting rod that goes between them so then and then it's just a matter of like throttle cable connections and and uh, they have these straight brackets in here and stuff as part of the parts so I'll pull this up. It, this is just like easy stuff. You just kind of sit in the seat. You you get comfortable where you want the throttle to be, and and you know you put it there. Typically, I think you're going to put it at front of this uh, rib right here, and um, it's comfortable, you know, and and uh, before the curve for the nose cone section. My uh, instrument panel's mounted. I think I showed you that, and uh, yeah. So it's just um, I'm just kind of picking this apart a little by little, but uh, I'm going to work on this. I might try to get the gear gears done and uh, I don't have my wheels yet but that's coming in a separate kit so I've got my brakes and my rims and my tires coming and uh, but I can install the nose gear um, which I have and get that going and then go ahead and uh, put the main gear together in the wheels just so that it's sitting off the ground and I can get under there and do things it's, it's going to create a little bit of tightness in space but I can move all this stuff over here in a little bit and and uh, that'll be fine so uh, but I'll do that and then um, obviously instrument wiring so I might just kind of pre get the instruments I'm gonna pre-wire that and then uh, that then when the motor comes I can wire everything up that way maybe work on the fuel lines a little bit there's not a lot to do there's just 26 groups um, but it's it's just working on things that you want to work on at them at the moment as Tom says you do your best work if you're working on what you like uh, at, the, at that moment so I got to wrap the shock cord laning you see the shock cord there. I've got two 15-foot strips. I'm going to do the rear, rear-mounted uh, um, sit on sit on its nose kind of thing. So that's going to go right here, and the shock cord will go right around there. So I got to take the fuel tank out to do that. So just some projects. Not sure what I'm going to do next, but I'll probably work on the throttles just a little bit more. Hello, everybody. Um, in this video, I have attached the um, uh, the little things for the the nut plates for the hinges for the rudder. So there's one on the top, one on the bottom. But just to see how it's going to go, um, I've got to do some measuring. You've got to make sure that this thing is like level. But uh, you can see the Roni brackets. Those are the Ronies right there. Um, and then the uh, bolts going through there to hold the horizontal stabilizers. So, and my daughter's, she's being a, she's going to be a strut. I think I might just put you on there, bolt you on there, right? And then you can just hold it up like that. That might change some aerodynamics as we're flying, but. So anyway, I just have that supported. There's the nose gear over there. It's not supported by the nose gear. I'm just it's hold, being held up by a bike tire. But yeah, so this is just uh, until I can get the um, the struts on there, the horizontal stabilizer uh, struts that can come down and uh, support the uh, horizontal stabilizers. And then I've got to cover the vertical stabilizer with fabric later, and I'll reattach everything back. But um, and then I can put the uh, elevators on there and stuff too, and just. And when I when it comes time for the push pull tubes and the horns and all that, but I just was gonna see how the kit assembles. And then over here, I did um, um, I I put this loosely on here for the the throttle bar connection. So I just have to hacksaw this end and then attach it, attach the uh, the male ball joint end. What? You want me to hold it? Yeah, I'm gonna hold that. Up. All right. Okay, working on Group 6 today of the Excalibur. Uh, for those of you building an Excalibur, Group 6 is the um, uh, the push rods for the rudder pedals. 
the linkages, the interconnect between the uh, front rudder pedals and the rear rudder pedals. And so what I what you do is you take um I guess it's a half inch tube and you uh, you put it in and you put these uh, these clevis pins in there or these um. Uh, I can't remember what they call them, like cleav half clevis or cleav something like that. But you put these these uh, or clevis heads, I guess, and you you uh, you rivet them just like you would normally do. That rivet's kind of cockeyed there, but um, and then you uh, you attach the the pin and then the little safety, uh, almost like a little um, removable cotter pin. You know, those are kind of nice actually. And uh, and then you you do the over sleeve for the length so then I kind of aligned them up I think this like that is is about where I want them to be and then they're about even with the back ones so that's it took me a while to do that it's not really hard I just was pretty meticulous about it um, I don't have my extra box yet so I can't do like main gear I want to do the tires I want to do the main gear um, and the uh, uh, the tail tail section but I, I, I really I've got my stuff out here but I started to put it together, but I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I was talking to Tom last night, is I'm going to paint the um, elevators, horizontal stabilizers, and rudder. And um, I've decided to go with a, uh, basically, um, like, a, like a home latex paint. And there's lots of options you can do with this, and I, you know, you, I'm sure you, you might know more than I do about it, but as far as um, uh, home build airplanes, you can do as simple as home exterior UV protected exterior latex paint home paint um, and then uh, you know put like a clear coat on or finish uh, there's there's a bunch of good videos on YouTube where you can watch and see them rolling it on with a foam brush that's what I'm gonna do I uh, probably do that over spray so I can do it in the garage and I don't need any you know sheets up or any protection or anything like that I can just do it um, and then you could uh, you can wet sand it you can use buffer and buff it I and mean, there's lots of different things you could do but anyway the point is, is I'm gonna go pretty cheap just cuz you know that's, that's just the idea I want to I kind of want to do it at, at a value and still make it look nice so if I paint these things now then I can I can wrap the vertical stabilizer and fabric and then go ahead and attach everything up and then put the uh, struts in and stuff like that I want to get that done um, there's not a lot of things but you know like I keep saying but just a lot of little things um, and so Still trying to decide, you know, if I'm going to do a little door here, uh, maybe on the other side or something like that to, to access stuff. Probably not, to be honest with you, because I think if you just remove the cushion, I'm going to put cushion, I'm going to glue up uh, strips there so it'll stay. But if you remove the cushion, you have access to your fuel tank, you can reach in and have access to, to your fuel pump and anything else that might be in here. You know, I'm not probably going to have a lot in there anyway, but um, so yeah. It's, uh, it's been fun. Um, it's a little warm here, so I'm feeling a little tired. I need to get some water, but it's coming along.